Thank you to Soccer Crow and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring today's video. Hi guys, and welcome back to another video. So on Instagram, I tend to post a lot of stories about like different projects or whips that I'm working on. And ever since I posted, I believe it's this wallpaper. So it's the Ike Evelyn one that I made in Live 2D and Clip Studio Paint. I got a lot of questions about the process and how I made it. So I'm going to be hopefully doing a little bit more of a not exactly a guide, but more of a kind of like insight to how I usually make these kinds of wallpaper because in terms of like the waving type of wallpapers that I've made in the past, I've made several different versions. So I had Finana, I have Alira, I have Pomu. I do have one that has all three. For some reason, it's not on my phone, so I won't show you guys that one. Maybe I'll put it on the screen. Um, I have the plain version, which is like a wind chime blowing in the kind of in the sky, I guess. Uh, I have the Fremenet one, which is the video that I did a while back showing you guys how I make my live wallpapers. Then I have the ones that I actually use for my phone, which is the pink bonbongi one, and then the blue one. But today, we are going to be doing this one. So if you want to see how I made the one of Albin, stick around and I'll show you guys the whole process for that. Now, just to kind of like a small disclaimer, I am pretty sure 100% like Samsung phones can have live wallpapers like this, but I'm not too sure if any other models do. I have a friend who has, I believe, a Google Pixel and I had her troubleshoot with me and she said that hers does not have exactly the wallpaper, like the live wallpaper option. And I had to do some research and see that iPhones also do not have that feature anymore. So if you do have a Samsung phone or know somebody who has a Samsung phone that you think would like a live wallpaper, then this might be a cool project that you can work on. So let's get started with kind of like the drafting process or like how I like to plan it and kind of like a small breakdown on how I end up doing certain parts so that we can rig it later in Live 2D. So let's move on to Clip Studio Paint to work on our first step. So technically, I already have this canvas laid out with my phone size. So I highly recommend that you take a screenshot like I did right here of my bonbongi wallpaper to find out the dimensions of your preferred wallpaper size or your phone type. So I just went ahead and did like create canvas from clipboard. And that way you can just use whatever that was your screenshot as kind of your canvas size. And mine is about 1500 by 3250. So that is what I'm going to be using. Next step is that I'm going to lower the opacity of my wallpaper and I'm taking a red color and blocking out what I would consider important areas. So if you have notifications, your clock, any text or anything that you want to be fairly visible and you don't want anything to be like obstructing it, then I highly recommend blocking those out. And then that way you kind of have a ready, kind of like a template for you to work with to see what elements can kind of pop in and out or what you want for your background. So for me, I kind of want the chibi to come in from the right hand side and then kind of basically kind of move within our middle section between my clock and the swipe to unlock symbol at the very bottom. Your layout might differ and you might have other ideas on what you want to do. I kind of wanted to do a jumping one from the bottom going up. So you might want to play around with your kind of layout alongside with your, like your clock placement, any notifications or anything like that, then definitely make sure to take those into consideration. But after that, we can go ahead and sketch out our character. So if you watched the very beginning of the video, I did mention and show you already kind of like a preview of what I'm going to be doing for today's little character. So I am drawing Albin Knox from Nijisan GEN and he is a VTuber similar to Ike Eland. So I'm taking my old Ike version and making sure that the proportions are going to be somewhat similar just because I've already used Ike, I've used Bonbongi, I've used like I think Alira and Pomu and Finana all have the similar proportions as well. So just to kind of keep them all consistent, I am using Ike as kind of like the base and then we'll draw Albin's design right on top. So because we are going to be kind of animating and rigging everything in live 2D after drawing everything in Clip Studio Paint, I am going to keep the style of everything fairly simple, which means that I'm going to avoid doing a lot of like soft soft shading versus like cell shading and stuff because I find it a little bit hard to work with especially if you're not used to doing rigging or prepping your files for rigging. So to briefly talk about it, 
certain parts need to be in a certain order so that they can appear normal but I still have like a complete form underneath so that each thing can kind of overlap and able to be manipulated without it looking super weird when you have to crop and kind of like change it when you do stuff in live 2d highly recommend you actually search up like a tutorial about like rigging and just like breaking down your artwork to get prepped for rigging and animation in live 2d so right now I have Albin basically all sketched out how I wanted. I am doing his casual outfit, but a small tip if you're doing a animation similar to mine where they're popping in and out, kind of using the transform tool and moving the center crosshair to the very bottom or moving it to wherever you want to pivot your object. I just find it easier to help visualize what the animation is going to look like. But with the sketch done, we can soon move to our line art phase. So before the line art and coloring, let's take a little snack break with our sponsor Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. If you're looking to try out new snacks from Japan, then you're in luck. Sakura Co and Tokyo Treat have these lovely snack boxes where you can experience Japan from the comfort of your own home. The boxes are beautifully designed for the special occasion, the Mid-Autumn Festival. Tokyo Treat is a monthly pop Japanese snack subscription box with 20 of the latest exclusive, limited edition, and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks that are only available in Japan for a limited time. This includes a full-size drink, an exclusive ramen, and a variety of different snacks. With the mid-autumn festival coming up, I'm looking forward to some of these more seasonal snacks that I can already see in this box. While Sakura Co is an authentic Japanese snack subscription box, Sakura Co supports local Japanese snack makers and each box comes with 20 traditional, authentic, and artisan Japanese snacks, but also includes Japanese teas and a special Japanese tableware. Similar theme, and I know I will enjoy a lot of these snacks from this season as they tend to be not overly sweet. Also, the special little tableware for this month is the Tsukimi dish. This has a beautiful design that fits perfect for the season, but I also love that this dish has a contrasting texture of the design. It's both matte and glossy for the finishes, and I think that's like probably one of my favorite designs for the dishes so far. Both boxes come with a 24 page cultural guide and I love that it includes information regarding the allergens of each of the snacks but also information of little tidbits of information revolving around the culture and traditions in Japan. So if you're ever interested on why the rabbit is associated with the moon and the season then definitely give it a read. Each month has a different theme meaning that you get to try out a whole new selection of new treats and snacks every month. For example, Tokyo Treat's box theme for the month of September is the Moonfest Snacktacular, while Sakura Co's theme is the Autumn Moon Festival. So as usual, I will be trying out the tea from the Sakura Co box. So this is the Tsukimi Ryokuta, which is kind of like another lovely green tea. It's very rich in flavor and has a very beautiful nice green color. To have with the tea, I did try out the black sesame miso arare, which came in the Sakura Co box as well. It was very crisp and just like a tad bit savory, which I wasn't really expecting. Or maybe I should have because it was a miso flavor. But my favorite has to be the kokuto kinako mochi. I always love desserts that have like soybean flour or like roasted soybean flour on top. It's just really tasty. It's like not overly sweet. So I think this one is probably my favorite out of this particular box. And the bonus is that it does have a nice brown sugar filling in the inside. I also can never go wrong with mochi, but also from the Tokyo Treat box, I did love the mini mochi candy. They're very nice, not quite the same mochi texture. It's definitely more on like the sweets and candy sides of things. And also the caramel popcorn is very tasty too. I didn't mention it, but I do like matcha Kit Kats the most. I think I have them so often that this one didn't surprise me too, too much. But if you like to get a box for yourself or want to give these as a lovely gift to family or friends, especially if you're celebrating the mid-autumn festival, festival around this time of year, then check out the link in the description to get your boxes today. Thank you again Sakura Co and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring today's video. Now let's start on that line art for Albin. 
So line art and coloring is kind of like where I do the bulk of my splicing and splitting of all my parts. I'm going to show you briefly in certain parts of the drawing process where I decided to break down certain pieces. So even right now you can see that I have the upper lid, the lower lid, and the iris already separated. I lowered down the opacity to make sure that I can see exactly where each part is going to be overlapping and what is going to be covered. So you don't really have to fiddle with this if you don't plan on doing like a blinking animation or like any movement with the eyes. Like let's say you want to move the irises and stuff. If you're not going to do that, then don't, you don't really need to do this step. I don't think it's really necessary if you're just making the character have their eyes open like permanently for the duration of the animation. But if you are planning to do blinking and all that in Live 2D, then it's very similar to how you would do it for your VTuber model. So I do splice it in a very similar manner, but because the eyes are very simple in this kind of like cell shady, blocky, chibi style, it's taking a little bit less time to work on it. So I that's kind of like the reason why I wanted to make sure that every piece is kind of more simple because there's no point of really making everything super detailed and then rigging it super detailed if it's going to be like a five second animation. Obviously it's going to be preference, so if you want to do that, go ahead. But for me, realistically, I'm not going to notice all that stuff if I'm going to be like, you know, checking the time on my phone or if I'm grabbing my phone and I accidentally trigger the phone screen to unlock so I think simple is kind of better and I kind of do a simple background for albums compared to some of my previous ones because I think I don't know maybe it's just the aesthetic of it I think fits Albin a little bit more easily and it's just a little bit less busy in my opinion. So I did kind of like cut down a lot of the footage for the coloring and line art process. I kind of do them together for the most part so I kind of chunk it. I do the eyes usually first alongside with the face and I block in just like color alongside with the like the line art. Then after that I'll move on to the second simplest for me which is the body. So the body is split up into I think his torso and his legs are one piece. His neck is a separate piece under the torso. Then I have his right arm. I guess technically it's his left arm, which is like the one that's going straight down as one piece. And then his right arm is in two separate pieces so that I can have two joints to be able to do more of like a waving pose that's a little bit more natural. And you'll see me pivot and move that center little point in the transform tool to make sure that the joint kind of works out nicely when he waves his arm so I know exactly where I want to place it and whether or not some of the details I need to draw out more so that the overlap doesn't look too funky. I am definitely doing the hair last and I tend to do the hair last because it's a little bit of a nightmare so I'll talk about it more when we get there. Also, if you ever see a kind of like random floating image on Clip Studio Paint or on my Paint Tool side whenever I do these like screen recordings. I do have an app open called Peer Ref and it basically allows you to make like kind of like a mood board or anything like that. You can take notes on it and all that jazz too, but you can set it to be like a floating window always on top and I usually always use it whenever I'm drawing like complicated characters. So let's say Genshin Impact, Kai Star Rail, um, VTuber models where I need to have a closer look at some of their details. So it makes it a lot easier for me to do that. So I highly recommend checking out Pure Ref if you're looking to make some boards of characters or you want to use stuff as references and you don't want to open up separate windows. I think it was like super helpful when I was doing a lot of stuff in Paint Tool Sci because Paint Tool Sci doesn't really have floating windows if you have version one. But in Clip Studio Paint, you do have floating windows, but I do like having um, PRF open for the most part because I can have multiple references all on one canvas and I can just pan to check out which ones I want. So back to our line art in color. So for Albin's hair and just like general look, I am doing his, I guess this is his second outfit. So it's kind of like his casual outfit for the most part, which I think looks super cute. This is kind of what my layers are looking like right now, but the hair, I do always tend to do all the line art in different colors, so it helps me differentiate the 
kind of like different pieces from one another and then I'll work my way from the back to the front. So this way I know what's going to be covered and what's going to be overlapped and then I can also adjust things so that it makes it look like they're merged together if that makes sense. So starting with the back piece, I just kind of filled it in and it's also behind my head as well. So like Albin's head is kind of like one chunk as well. I'm not going to be rigging him to be looking left or right so I can have it as one static piece that's going to be moving together. After that, I tend to work on the bangs and like the side of his hair. So to block out color, I tend to pick a very vibrant color. That way I know I'm not going to be missing random pixels of color from my canvas. So after that, I will fill it in with the appropriate color. We can add shadows and then our highlights. And then after that, we can change the line art color, add any effects, and then I'll merge all those together so that it's one piece. So each piece that you see me fill out with red is kind of like one lock or section of hair and I keep that as like little, one little bundle so that we have the option to move it if we would like. I definitely think like the hair movement is going to be super minimal so this is not really a necessary step in my opinion either. You can definitely have the hair be fairly static and it won't really make too much of a difference. I think Hmm. I think the girl's hair, like Pomu, Alira, and Finana's were a little bit more noticeable because their hair is on the longer side. I think Ike's didn't move as much, um, but his earrings did. For Albin, I did end up moving his hair a bit. I think his body and just his head in general had more movement compared to Ike's. And then his little accessories on his bags also have a little bit of movement. But for the most part, I think everything is kept pretty simple. So now with Albin done, I am going ahead and working on the background. So like I said, I'm keeping in mind those red barriers every time I was placing certain important objects. So in terms of the theme, so Albin is very much like cat coated in terms of aesthetic and demeanor. So I went with the kind of like softer colors that's more warm to fit his color palette. And I'm adding a lot of elements that were more affiliated what I would say with his original outfit. So I have the number three from his original kind of like sweater. I have the little ear pieces or hair clips that he uses on kind of like his head accessories. I'm also putting the barcode at the bottom. I decided to take this footage out uh, for the most part because I didn't realize that Clip Studio Paint has a barcode asset that I could use. But you can see that I have like big areas at the very top so that I have enough room for my time alongside with notifications. And near the bottom, there's still a gap so that right above the barcode area is where the little thing that says like swipe to unlock will be. And then the center of where I have like a little dome cat shape will be where Albin is going to be popping in and out. Now, I don't mind if Albin kind of covers certain parts of the design too much because I'm going to be fixing the timing and the duration all in live 2D animation that portion because I'm going to make the background visible for like one second at the beginning and I think half of a second at the very end. So Albin only takes up like the center portion of my animation time anyways. So it's gonna be not too big of a problem. So now that we have Albin done right here and I also have the background done, we can go ahead and take both of them into Live 2D starting with Albin's model. So if you're not familiar with Live 2D, I highly recommend you looking up a tutorial because I'm not going to be going over tools and like exactly how to do everything. I'm just going to give you a very basic rundown of how I like to set things up. So right here has all my little parts and this is where all my deformers and rotation stuff is going to be applied. I'm going to go ahead and delete any unnecessary little layers. After that, we have the center area with the bars, which are my parameters. So I'm deleting any unnecessary parameters first, and then I will then add any new ones that I think I will need. And that way we can kind of get a good overview of what I want to do for the animation for Albin in general. So we ha I had to add arm wave. I think I added a another arm because I have two joints for his arm on the right hand side. And then I added one for the accessories. Everything else I think was already 
placed so we're gonna rig things as normal except for yeah there's no up and down for the head there's no up and down for the body or left to right for the body it's kind of like very simple things i'm using a lot of rotational deformers because i find it the most easiest to work with for something simple like this so the rotation deformer is the little line pin needle with the circle around it that you see me fiddling with and i find it the most easy to use to do more of like a waving or a back and forth animation rather than using the deformers to make things look a little bit warped i guess so I use the rotation deformers for all the joints, so both on the right arm and the left arm. I'm using it on his head and I use it on his body so that he can tilt his body into the screen and then he can tilt his head for any like cute movements. And then after that, we go into the rigging for the eyes. So eye rigging is, I don't, I feel like it's like one of the most satisfying riggings to do but it's kind of annoying um especially like if you're only rigging one eye and you're copying and pasting sometimes it gets a little bit finicky but for the most part eyes went pretty smoothly i think his turned out pretty cute i don't think i have like the awkward gap as much compared to some of my other rigs that i've done where i feel like when they close their eyes their eyes are too far apart versus like their eyes be look like they're too close together when they're open so I'm just glad that his turned out pretty cute for the most part. I did have to look up a tutorial on how to apply like the second eye color to be placed into already like a rigged eye. So I did have to look that up and luckily there's like almost a tutorial for every question I had anyways. So highly recommend just looking up tutorials on YouTube or like looking up different forums and stuff that talk about rigging in live 2D. You'll definitely find like a lot of resources talking about maybe something that you're struggling with. So I think the last thing I ended up rigging was Albin's hair. Now I think hair can be fun for rigging, but it's low-key a nightmare for me. So some people are really good at using like the warp deformers and all that to make sure the hair looks very bouncy and very soft when it moves. I'm doing mine very clunky for the most part. Like I said, it doesn't really matter too much for these little small details, I don't think. I'm also doing the little shadows on his face that is created by the hair to match a little bit closely. It's just small stuff I feel like is that's kind of for my satisfaction because looking at the wallpaper like now, I don't think the hair made too much of a difference of being like, oh my god, it's like a kind of contributing a lot to the animation. It's just, it's just there, I guess, at this point. But with the rigging done, you can go ahead and open up the animation file as well in Live2D. And I went back into my Clip Studio Paint to make sure that I have the correct size. So I'm gonna click on scene one and I'm gonna take fix aspect ratio off and change our canvas to be the correct size so that we can place Albin correctly in the right position before we do any of the actual animation portion. So doing animation in Live 2D, I find quite simple if you already did the bulk of the work with the, the rigging. So basically with all the parameters and the rigging done, all I have to do is basically time all of the animations or like the parameters on a timeline. So starting off with the very left of my timeline, I am putting all the default numbers that I want or the default position for Albin, which is like off the screen to the right and making sure that nothing's interfering. Then about the one second mark, I am making sure that Albin is kind of like popping in so that you know, I still have a little bit of a gap at the very front and then at the very end, he will pop back out. So I don't want him to come in and out too quickly, but I also don't want him to linger too long because I want the background to also just stand out every so often. Then we kind of move down the line for our kind of like animation sequence. So after I did the popping in and out into the screen. I think after that, I did the waving animation. I did do his head bobbing. I did do the hair. Then I did his eyes and his mouth. And then we do a fine tweaking and trying to figure out whether or not things look a little bit more natural. Do I want to slow things down? Do I want to speed things up? Or maybe some things I feel like don't match up. So I tried to time his head 
tilts, I guess, similar to his arm wave. So initially when he comes on the screen, he has like a very small wave and then he does like one big gesture. So I was trying to time it more appropriately. And then everything else is kind of timed with just the movement. So the hair, the accessories, and his eyes opening and closing are timed so that it would be slightly after when he appears on the screen so that you actually see his eyes before hand because I feel like for Ike's you barely see his eyes so yeah it's just like a lot of finagling with the timing for the most part but I do enjoy working on the animation this way so definitely in the future I'm gonna play with this kind of feature and see what I can do with it maybe for future 17 animations so that I can get more used to it and see how much rigging is gonna help me produce future animations. So after that, I'm going ahead and exporting everything together. I also didn't mention this. In previous sessions, I actually kind of put the chibi and the background together in a editing software like Wondershare Film Aura just because I export the chibi to have a transparent background and do it that way. But more recently, I've been just putting the background on the timeline when I'm doing the animation and exporting that together. But hopefully you guys enjoyed watching me do the little animation of Albin and hopefully anybody who has a Samsung phone can give this a try. I do apologize that this is not for every phone out there but hopefully you enjoyed today's little process of me making a live wallpaper and I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye!